All right. Okay. We're coming back around, and it's the second hour, Z Live. Uh, that was a fun first hour, and uh, that was amazing. Okay. So, gang stalking. Um, well, there's no sor- shortage of that topic uh, spoken here. Uh, that is something I will not um, uh, shut up about because, you know, it's you, you, look. There's so many targeted individuals that tune in here and tune in elsewhere, you know, to other shows, too, to try to just find out what happened to them and, you know, why they were targeted. In my, in my case, I, I, I've, when this would happen uh, time and time again, um, you know, you, you, didn't even, you weren't even aware of it at first. And then when, you, when you're made to be aware of the surveillance and uh, people taking pictures and putting microphones in your house and, uh, or disturbing your house a little bit to kind of freak you out, it's all, it's all a satanic – plot really it's just uh but i wanted to get uh, dr john hall in here uh today because of the events obviously we haven't spoken to him a long time and i i kept meaning to get back to him uh again for a follow-up but uh, this is a good time because now you're seeing the ramp you're seeing gang stalking going mainstream no longer are people going to be you know locked up uh, in the nut house for talking about it because <laughs> it's it's been legitimized, especially this last week. So let me uh, see if uh, I bring in our guest, uh, Doctor John Hall. Are you there? Yes, I am, Zeph. It's been a long time. It's good to hear from you again. Yeah, the time flies. I you know because I keep meaning to 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 get back to people. And, you know, it just and then it's two years. You know, it's it's amazing. Has it been that long? I, was, I, I know it's been at least a year, a year uh, that we talked about this topic last. And, uh, I mean, you're certainly one of the biggest proponents of exposing this that, uh, that I know. Because, um, you know, because I've been through it. And I just, you know what? I actually just went through it again recently. And I, I'm not going to say anything about it right now because I want to find out, you know, what, what I want to get an update from you right away. Um, you know, you, you wrote this book where you were uh, kind of ostracized and criticized and, you know, your job was in jeopardy. A lot of you had a lot of backlash and I uh, saw a lot of, you know, mean people trying to write stuff. They ne- proving they never read the book, just giving you like one star on Amazon, <laughs> you know, and yeah. it se- seemed like they were stalkers. Well, so now how, you know, so so since the writing of the book, what what's been happening? Uh, well, I mean, you remember the the book is called A New Breed, Satellite Terrorism in America, right. and it goes through not only the gang stalking aspect of this, but electronic harassment, which goes hand in hand. Um, a lot of changes in the last, uh, especially in the last year, uh, you're right, it has slightly started to become more mainstream. There are some uh, mainstream media sources starting to pick up these problems. And there's some people, um, you know, some, some stars and celebrities starting to come forward uh, with these complaints, which is actually... Uh, done it a little bit of good. Of course, you know, there's still the general public consensus that it's all mm-hmm. mental illness. And even with the celebrities voicing this complaint, it, it goes yep. along with it. But that's how it's designed to work. It's designed to, to make one look mentally ill. But that you're talking about the Quaids. Yeah. You're talking about Randy Quaid, and he came forth with an stunning admission of all this. Just unbelievable. Yeah, and and yeah, and, uh, yeah, and Randy Quaid is, you know, is typical of a victim. I mean, he's had some some problems in the past you know he hasn't exactly been an angel in the celebrity circles right. and and that is the exactly the type of people that they they like to victimize because it's your past history that further victimizes you and and lends to discreditation right. uh, and they certainly done that with him so in other words finding someone that's already weak in terms of the public uh perception so that when they complain uh, they won't be able to um get anywhere well, that's exactly right, Zev. And, and if you look back at, you know, the early the early research into mind control and um, was MK Ultra, mm-hmm. and almost all the victims were what we term social outliers. You know, they were, you know, men who were using prostitutes. They were people that were involved in the drug counterculture. They were they were people that already had a lifestyle that was somewhat discrediting to them. So when they did get victim not victimized, no one would listen because they'd say, "Well, you know, you used to do this, you were involved in this," and there was always an excuse for for why it was happening, and usually that excuse went back to drugs or mental illness. Yeah, most uh, uh, creative people, artists in, in in Hollywood and elsewhere, but most creative people, whether you're successful or not, have tended to to mess around with drugs and you know just just excesses it at times, and maybe it's because of their creativity that could be it, but. When Whatever it is, it can be used then against them later, and uh, you can never live it down. I mean, if you've done time in a rehab, for example, 
you know, uh, you're, you're, that record follows you. And even though well, it's, and even and, and even more than that, you know, the, I don't know if you've noticed, there's commercials out right now that have uh, Glenn Close and several other stars that are standing next to people that have had, you know, mental health diagnoses, uh, wearing T-shirts where, you know, one it'll say one T-shirt will say support system and the other one will say bipolar disease, and they're trying to mainstream this attitude that it's okay to be mentally ill, that you know these are people and they have a problem and it and, and it can be corrected or be dealt with. But that's just far from the truth in real society. In real society, once you're diagnosed with any type of mental illness, you're looked at differently. You're looked at differently in society. You're looked at differently in your job. And usually the downhill slide starts after a false diagnosis. <laughs> well, yeah, and and that's why I had one of our friends, one of our listeners, um, who happens to be a, a doctor, uh, he wrote up that I was sane um, and that I was of, of sound mind and body. And he you know, wrote it in an official document and signed it. He said, you might need that. <laughs> you know, just well, in case. And, they and, you know, and, and the, the, the sad part is the psychiatric community at the community level probably largely is ignorant of the technology and, the, and how the stalking works. But at the top of the food chain in the American Psychiatric Association and Canadian Psychiatric Association, you know, these psychiatrists, you know, especially early on, were the ones behind the research. You and Cameron, Sidney Gottlieb, Jolly and West. Yeah, Jolly you know, and West. The, the, those the organizations, they know very well this is going on. They were the proponents of it initially. And that is the, really the, the disgusting thing about that field of medicine is when a large group of people start displaying symptoms that don't fit into the criteria for mental illness, they change the DSM-4 to, to fit them in. Right. I mean, if you don't have your, uh, your mental illness, we'll, we'll, we'll find a new category for you. But isn't this, again, like the rise of psychiatrists like they had in the Soviet Union? I mean, isn't, doesn't it go hand in hand with communism and socialism? That, that... Oh, sure it does. Sure it, sure it does. And, it, and in this country, especially in the DOD, um, the psychi psychiatric professionals have been used as a weapon for some time. If you had an officer that disagreed with DOD policy or, you know, or a, you know, a ranking officer that you know, had different thoughts on something that, that went in contrary to his upper brass, one of the first things they do is pull that person in for a psychiatric eval. They, you know, they call them a pedophile or a drug addict mm -hmm. or give them a mental illness, and and that way it allows them to marginalize that person's views. Well, they were, yeah, and I've, yeah, well, so now that this last week has passed, and uh, and, and now that you, you know the the rhetoric, the fervor, the, the the intensity, the 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 heat of this nation is at the boiling point. What do you think uh, going forward? What, what's going to happen with regard to gang stalking? I mean, it, it's now they've been given legitimacy to go ahead and do it more. Yeah, that, yeah that, that's, that's one of the troubling things. But the, at least the good thing is we've, uh, Fox News and some other mainstream media sources are finally starting to take a look at this. I did an interview with really? okay. uh, Fox, Fox News out of Sacramento yesterday, as a matter of fact. Um, there's a individual, and I'll, I'll go ahead and mention his name. He's he's actually got some stuff out on the web. His name's Jesse Beltron, How do you and uh, I, I won't say his his particular uh, case, but he was witness to something um, that was kind of bad, and immediately started being gang stalked and electronically harassed afterwards. A very credible individual. What's his last uh, name? His last name, sir. The... Bel Bel Beltran. Okay. B e l t r a n. And uh, he, uh, you know, got in contact with me, and, and a very credible, educated person uh, has lawyers um, behind him. He was found to be chipped. Um, went to a dentist office for some basic uh, dental work, and woke up four hours later covered in blood and sweat, and uh, was chipped on either side of the TMJ joints in the jaw. And uh, has been frequency scanned, has been imaged, has found to be chipped. Has physicians that are working with him. Uh, on extraction, and and actually has Fox News um, doing a piece on his story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see here where that he had an RFID chip in him. Is that right? That's right. And uh, okay, so uh, I would think that this a lot of that is is a you know kind of a pretext to chipping everyone. You know, and that's the bill. Well, and, and, and now that's one of the things we think. But you know, most victims were not finding chips in, and. Um, if you read um, Dr. Robert Duncan, uh, is a former uh, DARPA 
a government researcher who did a lot of work in CIA programs who has also come out against this technology, just released a book called Soul Catcher, Volume 2. Mm -hmm. And he goes into detail on how brain entrainment can be done to cause just about any symptom, including voices in the head. And um, his take on wow. it, and, you know, and my take somewhat as well, is that the chipping is older technology, that most of this can be done now through um, remote neural monitoring, um, brainwave sensing, that where there really is no no chip required. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, this idea that you know perhaps uh, that whole biblical thing of a, of some you know something under the skin, under the forehead or the or the hand, um, you know, do you think they'll do it just to fulfill the biblical prophecy, or is it no longer necessary? Well, uh, well, it, it's not necessary to harass someone. Now, to fulfill biblical prophecy, certainly you would need a chip for data storage, you know, to buy or sell. And mm -hmm. and there have been, you know, Verichip's been a strong proponent of that. And, uh, um, you know, and they say that their chips are mainly for storage and not for tracking. I mean, most of us think that's mostly BS. But, right. uh, you know, the, that part of the prophecy certainly is true. And if you look at our, the, the current health bill, unless we get it repealed, mm -hmm. there is a provision in the, in the Obama health care bill for chipping to have your medical data in a chip in your forearm. So there it is, the beginning of that kind of thing where eventually nobody could buy or sell with it. Yeah, you know, it's amazing how it's going. I mean, it's supernatural and natural at the same time. It just seems to be going at such a quick pace that one almost gets this idea that we are really living in that last period of time. I cannot imagine this going, you know, the end game here, going further than we are now, I guess, would become sort of a lockup type tyranny. Uh, everybody tattling on everybody else, people being put in internment camps, the neighborhoods being uh, patrolled by military vehicles and that sort of thing. I mean, that's the next step if we if we don't do something about it. Well, and you know, Zeph, and my kind of take on it is, and uh, you know, and you know, you know, I have a Christian background, and right. um, that's what that's you, why I mentioned all that stuff because I didn't, <clears throat> I wouldn't have done that if you weren't. But I mean, since I, yeah. I know what you believe, also. Well, and if you if you, the way I kind of look at things, I look at things from an aspect if you know, if I were God, and I had you know something I created that was starting to get so advanced in their technology that they're approaching my ability as their God. Well, you know, in my take, it would be time for that creation to go, and uh, and and we're at that point now where <laughs> he said we, very, very he, he said very dispassionately. By the way, <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. okay. Time and, for this. Know, and, yeah. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. No, I thought if it's time for a break, I was just I was just gonna you know, just gonna say we now have the ability to read each other's thoughts, the government to hear your thoughts in real time, and actually control the mind. And to me, that's that is one of the one of the signs of the end of days, I would imagine. Yeah, because there's see that because there's no further one it can go. It, it it and it's so scary and interesting and weird and kind of exciting in a sense that it's jibing in with this you know kind of Mayan thing of 2012. I'm not I don't put a lot of stock into that, but it is interesting how it's all dovetailing together. And so quickly also, that, that kind of in a way gives me hope that we're going to hurtle on into the uh, – that, that this is really going to be the end of days like described in the book of Revelation because then I know I'm going to see my Lord, you know. I'm gonna, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, gosh, you know, it's – there's a huge fight that, that uh, against that kind of thought, you know. There's a lot of, you know, like History Channel, Discovery Channel, all these channels putting all this – billions of dollars into their productions to get us to, or millions in any way, to get us to, to um, have doubt in the biblical narrative, in the biblical story. Well, that's true, Zeph. Christianity is, uh, is being um, hit from every side currently, and if you, uh, even in this country by our own government, but if you look at other countries violently, you know, uh, you know, Turkey and a lot of the Arab countries have actually started bombing a lot of the Christian churches and Catholic churches, and mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, a, it's getting to be a scary time to be a, a Christian, that's for sure. Time to stand up. Well, okay, so in the book, you describe some of the most horrific... Uh, um, some of the most, you know, just you, you go through a step-by-step -step story about uh, break-ins and rapes and uh, videotaping taken and uh, used as per sold as pornography. 
uh, just and then you were harassed and then they had drugged you, uh, you know, and, and trying to discredit you and you stood up to it. Now, we, we've some time has passed now. They have been harassing you up to the last um, last time we talked. They were still at it, you know, with the, especially with satellite technology. W- what's happening now to you specifically for having? Uh, well, I'm, I'm still getting some electronic harassment, electrical disturbances in my home. Uh, the, the stalking after getting the names of the perpetrators out to the police, the stalking stopped uh, mainly to protect themselves because they're you know they're, there's enough evidence against them where if they get caught harassing me physically, mm-hmm. um, that, that would probably mean they're arrested. And, and they would fall. But uh, as far as, you know, electronic harassment, which a, a lot of people get, not only physically electronic harassment, but turning my lights off and on, opening and closing my garage doors, you know, they can control anything that has an electrical switch uh, using reverse electromagnetic pulse. And that's that I get a lot of that still. Um, and, and I've come across a number of other victims in San Antonio where they've moved on to other victims who have also identified the same mm-hmm. private investigative agency that's owned by a former FBI agent. And um, in, in the last two months or so, there's actually several police officers that are finally starting to see that you know, all these people have the same complaints. There must be something to it and have actually had a request for um, to meet with one of the officers that's investigating this crime. Now, whether that will come to anything, it's hard to prosecute what you can't prove. Mm-hmm. And I understand there the weaknesses within the police department. You know, you can't see this technology. It's done remotely, except for the stalking. And that's why I've told most victims focused on the stalking. Don't try to discern how the technology is being used. Try to get the stalkers in trouble. That'll lead you to the rest of the problem. And uh, and finally, they seem to be displaying some interest into the into the organized stalking aspect of it here. Yeah, uh, how how does one become a stalker? And is it organized where someone calls you and says, "Okay, uh, this guy's going to be out walking. Uh, uh, he'll be going to the movie theater, and I want uh, a couple of you to be there to do something weird because it, it's it, he's very disturbed at all this. So just do something in his face. How how does that get set up? Uh, st- that would be called street theater, right? Yeah. I, you know, I, I wish we knew that. I know uh, Eleanor White some time ago published a, it was actually a spoof, but it was called a, you know, the Organized Stalkers Manual or, or uh, True Justice Manual. And it was her, her opinion of what a manual may look like involved in training these people. Um, but it, it seems to be, at least in the area here where we did identify the stalkers, it seems to be mostly, you know, criminal lowlifes that, uh, get wrapped up into this, that get hired, that, um, you know, the thought of making some tax-free money. And more than that, uh, having access to uh, rape women that have been drugged seems to be the draw that gets these people involved. Okay. I've had people, um, I don't know why they follow me around, but people that I figured out that were paid to move to where I am and become my friend. Yeah, you do see that too. Yeah, I mean, you will have... I always tell a lot of the victims that I correspond with, be real leery of social networking sites. And let me give you a case in point. There was a, a girl in New York City. She uh, was an artist or is an artist and was getting electronically harassed there. On a social networking site, she met someone who told her to come to San Antonio. None of this was going on in San Antonio, Texas, that there was affordable housing. She moved down here. Uh, her family had a uh, a home line no, number for her, was their last contact with her, and then the phone got disconnected. They contacted me and said, you know what, we didn't believe any of this, but after hearing some of your interviews and reading your book, we think there is something going on. We can't find our daughter. Can you find her? And uh, I did a little tracing with the help of the San Antonio Police Department. I did find her. Uh, she was uh, in a dump of a, an apartment complex, a little 20-unit bills-paid flop house, essentially, on a bad side of town, and was being drugged and raped on a daily basis and essentially being used as a sex slave. And uh, I did uh, wow. get the police involved with her. We got her moved out of the complex and into a rape crisis shelter. So th- uh, so in that case, it was the fact that she was a, a, a you know a, an attractive woman that they wanted to have that that they saw as a, as a potential sex slave so that's how the gang organized the gang stalking organized around uh, around that that idea yeah and they or, and they organized it through uh, through a, a a friend that she had met that was that was going to save her from the problem in New York 
So that, yeah, the, the one that comes to understanding and really knows what you're talking about, because you really want to talk to someone about it. And they come saying, oh, well, tell me all about it. It becomes like Rosemary's Baby. You know? Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, and you end up talking, everyone in your social circle, we've had this too, everyone in the social circle is one of them, except for us. And, and that's something that's really hard to, to, uh, to combat as well, because when you, when you talk, to, talk to the victims that are especially early on in their targeting, if it's uh, done with electromagnetic energy, that stimulates dopamine release in the brain. And mm -hmm. um, excess dopamine does cause symptoms that are similar to schizophrenia. As a matter of fact, um, the dopamine hypothesis used to be the, the um, alleged cause or the supposed cause of schizophrenia, that too much dopamine makes you suspicious and wary of everything around you. Right. And we see that in the victims. You know, as your dopamine receptors downregulate, the victims will kind of normalize out where they'll see that not everybody's involved. You know, obviously some people are. Um, but early on, when the dopamine levels are real high, that's when, and I've talked to a lot of these victims, a lot of them in person, mm -hmm. we're just sitting in a coffee shop. Every car that drives by or every person that walks by in the coffee shop is part of it. You know, they're, they're part of it. They're staring at me. They're, they're driving by to check me out. And, and, and that really is a function of, of neurotransmitter change. Uh, and, and as you see a so progression that's not, in the victim. That's, that's not true then? Then, then every, of course, everyone isn't part of it, but they think that. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. They're, 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 I mean, obviously, part of the gang stalking is they will usually will enlist the help of some of your neighbors. Sometimes, and I know in the case here, they would tell the neighbors that, you know, we're FBI and we're part, you're going to be part of this investigation. We're watching this person. Some people are paid straight out. You know, some people know it's a, cr a criminal entity. Uh, and they're just told, hey, well, we'll pay you so, such, such amount to let us mount a camera on your back patio facing this house. And yeah. that's one of the things I make clear to a lot of the victims. They think that it's FBI or CIA. Most people, there's no reason the FBI or the CIA would want to investigate you. And if somebody comes to somebody's house saying, We're, you're going to be part of an FBI investigation, we want you to help us watch this person, in reality, that doesn't happen very often. I mean, it may happen in some organized crime cases, but in, you know, in a 35-year-old housewife from Reno, you know, who's not a political activist, not involved in organized crime or, or drug carteling, you know, that's just not going to happen. And, uh, and and that's why you would part of our educational process is to convince people that when if somebody ever comes to you asking to do this, call the police on them because they're not FBI. Mm -hmm. Impersonating an officer—that's a federal crime. And they did that here. You know, they told my ex-fiancé's neighbors that they were FBI, and uh, when in reality they were a private investigator group that is owned by a former FBI agent, but he had provided them with false credentials. Well, that is a uh, uh, felony rap if they can prove it, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, okay, so, yeah, it's not everybody. But in, in the case I'm talking about, it, in terms of, a you know, a, a tight-knit social network, it seemed like friends that, you know, um, where had they they got were they went away and new people came in and then it became like a different, um, like like I say, a group full of them. And it wasn't paranoia. It was, they were all working together, and um, ultimately. And let me ask you another question about this. So let's say they get the surveillance in the house and they get the cameras going. What do they do with all that footage of you? And do they know it's you and your name? Like I've, I've seen where they had a camera, you know, a mile away, you know, with a, with a, with a, you know, a strong lens on it. What are they doing with all that footage? Well, in, in, in the, in the instances where it's sexual assault, there are websites, foreign websites that do air, um, you know, live rape footage and, and snuff film type footage. Um, you know, what, what they do with the rest of it is anybody's guess. You're right. That's a lot of data to store. Um, I, I would imagine it's probably not being stored and only used for real-time surveillance. And as far as the cameras, you know, a long way away, um, you know, they have now uh, dome-type cameras that have very clear images, you know, from from a long way away. And, uh, right. and I've actually done some work with, uh, you know, some of these, you know, pan, tilt, zoom type cameras that actually are in a weather shielded dome. And I mean, you can get you can get pretty, pretty close up images from, you know, at least a quarter of a mile away. Yeah. And the thing is, is most people that have a camera like that, they're, they've got to be working for somebody. They, that's, that's not some homeowner, right? 
No, actually, those are available. They are expensive. I mean, you're looking that, I mean, you're talking about a thousand dollar camera, right? But that's not outside. They can be bought from just about any spy shop or online. They're called pan tilt zoom cameras, and uh, um, they're available to anybody in the public. And I mean, all you would have to do is mount it to the top of your house if you're if you're on a high spot, and you could zoom in on just about any of your neighbors. Okay, and then what about uh, infrared? Well, infrared and FLIR and X-ray imaging are, are what they're using to actually see people indoors. And that also allows for anatomically correct attack using directed energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other way they're doing it is with brain entrainment, where you know they have a, a pre-patterned um, set of experiences, emotions, or physical symptoms that once the brain entrains that, that extraneous frequency, it will start to envelop it and, and resonate within the same frequency. And then that individual will display anger if that's what they're trying to target them with, or, you know, depression or twitching or, you know, heart problems. Um, allergy attacks are another common one. Uh, you can actually stimulate the brain to produce histamine. Um, and that is, that's brain entrainment. And that's what I was talking about earlier with um, the, the area of harassment where you really don't need to be chipped for it to happen. Okay, so, you, you know, they can trigger people, like, if they know people are on the edge or whatever, like this guy, this Lochner guy, you know, and in Tucson, could he have been um, z- zoomed in on or beamed? Well, certainly he could have, and he did make some references to mind control, uh, and that's one of the problems that we that we have is because this technology is meant to simulate mental illness, it's very difficult to tell well, is somebody mentally ill, and that's why they're 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 doing this? Are they mentally ill and being victimized, or have they been victimized to the point of being mentally ill and it's strict victimization? There's no way to there's no way to wow. bridge that gap. And um, I recently, in last October, had a symposium at Sonoma State University, uh, where we had several sociologists, psychologists, psychiatrists, a, a former uh, head of uh, the FBI, several other physicians. You know, all brainstorming over one of the things is how do we differentiate between someone truly with schizophrenia and someone that's being victimized to mimic schizophrenia. Uh, And so far, we haven't come up with any good answers other than two of the symptoms that are always present in somebody who's being electromagnetically harassed are tinnitus, ringing in the ears. Almost 100% of the victims will say it started off with a high-pitched tone in the ears, then it digressed to hearing voices. The other symptom is called phenomes, hmm. and that is where when you're trying to sleep at night and your eyes are closed and you're being bombarded with electromagnetic energy, you'll see flashes and streaks of light with your eyes closed, and that's from direct stimulation of the optic nerves. Okay. I've had that. <laughs> the, uh, the ringing in the ears, um, you know, from time to time. But uh, the flashes of light, definitely. And, uh, you know, I've had them also when I opened my eyes and I've looked around and I've seen, you know, things streaking around um, in a perfectly dark room. Yeah, and that, and that, is, that is from direct stimulation of your optic nerves in the, in the eye with electromagnetic energy. And you know where we, where we uh, see that often is in people getting MRIs. If you put a human being into an MRI unit, as you're doing the MRI, if their eyes are closed, they'll see the same thing. Okay. Okay. So some of us are beamed. I may be beamed. I, you know, it's, 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 I certainly have had, you know, the, the visitations, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, I didn't want you to come here to be my therapist, but I might as well just go ahead and say what my experience is and see what you have to say, because, you know, I, you go crazy if you don't say something at some point. I've been talking about it on, on and on, and I've had lots and lots, lots of people who listen to this program are targeted individuals. In fact, we have a whole network pretty much of targeted individuals who are friends, you know, and I guess that that's therapeutic, you know, for us to help each other. But it seems to me that my targeting began when I was a ch- in childhood, you know, and it, it's been kind of on and off ever since uh, more, and, you know, like I say, some of these scenarios like paying people to become you know a friend you know to move where i am and then become friends and it's strange and then usually it it, it's almost like spiritual warfare you know we get you you know they get run off eventually 
you know, and uh, it, you wonder, I guess what happens is I don't, you know, I, I pop the thing. I, I find out about it. I figure it out. And then, and then, then they run away. Well, and that's why, and it, what you're what you're describing happens quite frequently, and that's why when I uh, when I correspond with a lot of these victims, I I tell them watch out who you meet on social networks, watch out who you, when people are coming up and and intentionally wanting to be your friend, um, be real cautious, be especially be cautious who you talk to this about, and as you said, that's one of the the pluses of of having a, a TI group in your community. Uh, it gives you somebody that you can vent to without risk of being parked in front of a psychiatrist who's going to further victimize you. Um, and we've tried to foster, through freedom from covert surveillance and harassment, we've tried to foster splinter groups of that organization in every state. Because this is nation, it's global, but in this nation, who most of the people that I correspond with are, are here, it's in every state. And, and the only state where we're not seeing gang stalking along with the the electronic harassment are in states like Minnesota, um, 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 Dakotas, um, Wyoming, you know, and, and that's strictly a function of not enough population there for them to put boots on the ground to stalk you. Those people are still getting electronically harassed. They're not noticing the breaking and entering and the stalking, and that's strictly because there's they don't have people there to do it. Wow. Boots on the ground would mean, uh, obviously, having people in your neighborhood, people that you know, people at the gym, people at work, which is called mob stalking, by the way, at work. That's uh, when they when they turn against you um, en masse, almost, you know, orchestrated. And you wonder what they're getting out of it. And what we know from uh, Dr. John Hall, my guest today, author of A New Breed. And go check that out. It's on our website. Uh, you can get there by going to ZefDaniel.com. It'll bring you to the website. And you click the book on, and it will take you to the site where you can take a, a deeper look into it. But uh, so so the, there's numerous or various motivations, right, uh, John? I mean, there's, there's a lot of different... Um, things that they get out of it. Some, for some, it's just sex. For some, it's uh, perhaps thievery. For others, there's some kind of a surveillance thing involving the government or, you know, psyops or something. Well, that's exactly right. And, and I think what it all boils down to, if you, if you work your way up to the top of the food chain with this, it, most of us think that this is a continuation of MK Ultra experimentation. You know, these people didn't come by this technology haphazardly. Uh, they all do appear to be networking. Um, it seems to be getting done with a, a manual because every victim is, is complaining of the exact same symptoms, the exact same scenarios as far as the stalking, the breaking and entering. I mean, there's some other smaller things that everybody is seeing. A lot of people will find a real fine uh, volcanic dust that collects all over their house. Uh, we've had several instances here in San Antonio where these perpetrators have actually spilled this dust. Uh, and it looks like the dust that if anyone owns a chinchilla, it looks like volcanic dust, the kind of dust you get for your chinchilla to bathe in. Um, it's usually placed in the air conditioning circuit, so it scatters out around the house. And its purpose is to get into your clothes and get on your skin. So when you do leave the house where they can't use X-ray imaging on you and it's at night and they're, they're down to having to use thermal imaging or infrared imaging, it lights you up in the dark under, under infrared imaging. And yeah. that's one of the other things that we see. And everybody complains about finding this, this gritty dust in their house. So that, wow. that, that, that tells us that that part of it at least – that these people are being provided with the technology, they're being provided with a manual of what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And that lends itself back to that the, the government is giving people access to this and then sitting back and watching and taking notes. And that's exactly how MK Ultra was done. It was done through front companies, and it was done through universities to make it look like legitimate research. Well, do you think we're going to see more violent... Um... Well, J Dr. Jolion West, let's take him for an example. Okay, if he were alive today, uh, he'd be heading this whole operation out probably. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and you, you know, so he was the one that was uh, with, the, okay, John Hinckley. Um, you, you know, uh, Sirhan Sirhan was his first uh, big hit. Um, you had um, uh, Timothy McVeigh. And, and he, he was the uh, top psychiatrist in on that. I mean, so this guy's really behind. I mean, it's almost like he was the architect of a lot of this. Oh, Jolly and West was uh, was one of the big players in MK Ultra from the beginning. 
And uh, if you look at some of his research, you know, he was a proponent of using mind control to civilize urban environments. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially in California, that was one of his big studies was using this type of technology to to civilize black unrest and black urban environments in California. That's right. So, it was I mean, the, it, it, that was in Malibu at the Nike missile base. He wanted to set up operations there. Uh, it was under Reagan, I think. And um, I, yeah, I remember the, uh, the 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 program. It actually there was some news on it, and, and it broke, and then it was covered up. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things that we're really combating is all the research is out there. And, and if you look at, you know, the, the government doesn't spend a billion dollars on on researching mind control just to see it all in with the Church Committee and the Rockefeller Commission. You know, it, it's continued on. It's just the only thing that stopped was the leakage into freedom of information. Okay. Um, where we are today with the Obama administration, um, obviously a certain kind of um, – I almost see this like Soviet Russia, the rise of psychiatry, the rise of uh, uh, surveillance, the rise of putting more and more surveillance out there. I mean this is kind of – it's all coming to fruition. Do you think it will go more or less mainstream where – where it won't be surreptitious, where it would be more in your face. Like, for example, what I mean is there would be, say, a checkpoint in a psychiatric questionnaire to fill out at the checkpoint between, okay, Texas and New Mexico. Say, I'm going to drive down to San Antonio to see a, one of your conferences. Okay, I'm on my way to San Antonio, and I get hit at a checkpoint, and I fail the uh, psychiatric exam. <laughs> so, so, you know what I mean? It, that's the, Leaping ahead, that's the, you know, I see it coming out of the closet at some point. Well, you know, I, I don't, I don't know if it would ever come to that because the, a lot of the goal of this is, in the people that are being harassed, is to be able to diagnose them as either paranoid, schizophrenic, okay. or delusional, and you know, for them to come to that much of an admission, would have to admit that that, that you're a victim of technology and not a, a victim of mental illness. So that that's why I think they'll try to keep it in the dark as long as they can, and that's why our our educational efforts are really our 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 best way to save each other from this, and that's to get the people who aren't being harassed, who aren't being exposed to it, to understand that some of us are, and where we'll have a unified front across the nation of people saying this technology um, needs to be curtailed. I mean, it's never going to go away. They've invested too much money in, in perfecting it. The people who are saying it needs to be abolished, that will not ever happen. But there's certainly a lot of good that can come out of this technology. If you look at the Terry Schiavo case, yeah. you know, it was left up to her neurologist looking at archaic EEGs you know, that, that started in the, you know, were invented in the 1950s to determine whether she had any brain function or not. Well, with this technology, they could have put her under a scan and told, be able to tell if she has active thought or not, you know, in seconds. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, there are some good things, you know, smoking cessation, you know, drug cessation. You know, some, there are some good things that can come out of manipulating the mind. But unfortunately, any type of good technology that comes along usually gets enveloped by the government and used for evil. Yeah, against the people. And, you know, which is what we see today with <clears> – <throat> I don't even know how people would even pay attention to the gang stalking now because people are being taxed to death. They're being thrown out of work. And, you know, probably the gang stalking business isn't what it used to be in terms of, like you say, boots on the ground. you got to pay people to go into these communities, set up shop, and then and then hit their targets, Right. Well, and that's still pretty easy to do. And one of the things, I don't know if you've experienced this, but most PIs noticed money being taken out of their accounts. And part of this technology is the ability to know all your passcodes, uh, especially those people who do a lot of their banking online. Well, any code you can think of, they have, including the code to your alarm at home. That's how they get around your alarm, the codes to your passcodes to your checking account. Um, most of this is being financed through uh, electronic bank fraud and ghost mortgaging. Um, the group here, all of the PIs that were involved in the case here, all were either real estate agents or mortgage brokers on the side as well. And um, most of their financing was being done through creating ghost mortgages, you know, where you get a large sum of money, you know, get the cash and then right. never pay the mortgage back, and it's all done under a fake name. And when you have people that are working from the top as a mortgage broker for a bank all the way down to the person actually selling the real estate, um, that's very easy to manipulate. 
Okay, yeah, some 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 good advice. And and uh, all right, so you've come forward, and you know you would be uh, a target, obviously, for some of this kind of stuff. Do you think that the uh, your public voice on this really controversial topic and a topic that gets you in trouble, you know, people think you're nuts. Has that uh, has being public helped? Well, I, I it, it certainly hasn't. <laughs> it didn't do my career a lot of favors initially. Um, that has it, it's mainstreamed enough now where people, rather than just thinking you're crazy, at least most people now will go, yeah, you know, I, I guess that sounds like that's probably possible, knowing the technology we have now. Um, the generation under, I mean, you and I are about the same age, and the generation under us, you know, the the twenty year olds. You know, they grew up watching enough movies and hearing enough about this technology where they don't have a problem believing it. it it's the people that are over 40 into their 50s and 60s who, unfortunately, are also the people with, you know, some political and financial connections to help make this go away yes. that don't necessarily believe it. And the ones that are very patriotic just find it hard to believe that our government would experiment on us. You know, despite yeah. having this most recent Guatemalan incident where Hillary Clinton had to do a public apology to. Um, the country of Guatemala for the CIA and the and the CDC intentionally infecting these people with gonorrhea and syphilis, mm-hmm. you know, to oh. study it covertly. Um, they they still just refuse to believe that our government would experiment on us. Oh well, you know, but at the same time, these are people that, you know, they're living in denial because they don't want to see their country as evil, and uh, and they feel some of them too old to do anything about it. You know, it's too big of a problem if it's really true. How are we? You know, it's it's too negative. It would it would poison their outlook on life, and um, and then there are others of us who just think, okay, so you roll your sleeves up and you get busy. You know, you you just have to go at it. Okay, free speech. You know, when they start curtailing free speech, this may be one of the things that they don't want you to talk about. But um, or maybe that it's just too exotic. Uh, you, you know, still, the, the, the government is, is really tracking people that are talking about, um, you know, politics and are really angry people, and they're, they're starting to target in on those, you know, as, as potential killers in the future. You know, at one of my uh, conferences, I, I had an older gentleman came up to me, and he said, you know what, it, it, it's an interesting topic. He said, and his take on it was, he said, you know what, the only problem I have with this, if our government had this capability... He goes, somebody would have been complaining about it before now with some credibility. And and I said, well, that's already happened. That's been happening for a decade, people, or, or longer, that people have been complaining about this. And he goes, but all of those people are crazy. And I said, well, that's exactly how this technology works. I mean, it doesn't matter what your credibility factor is. I mean, if you come out and look at, you know, Quaid's been a successful actor. You know, I've been a, a, a successful physician with a good practice, with no malpractice claims, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, no nothing nothing against my, my uh, sensibility as a physician. Right. And the right. same thing happened to me. The minute I wrote this book, half the people thought I was a genius. The other half thought I was wacko. And uh, and I told him, I said, that's exactly how this is meant to work. It's meant to make, make people who don't know anything about the technology question the sanity of those complaining about it. Oh, gosh, you know, they got it. Yeah, they got it kind of sewn up. I mean, they have the advantage, definitely, uh, the the uh, perpetrators of it. And um, But like you said, these networks are global. So you would say the same thing is going on in Europe then, than, than we see here. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I've had uh, – there's an, a very large group of TIs that, uh, that contact me on a regular basis from the U.K. Mm-hmm. I've recently heard from several TIs in Germany, from France, from Italy. Uh, recently had a uh, TI that has, has corresponded with me on a regular basis from Yemen commit suicide. Oh. Um, yeah, it's a it's a global, global thing. Yeah. And, and commit- every, every industrialized nation has worked on this technology. Okay, so suicide. Now, that's a, a common theme here. Once a person's targeted, a lot of times they're just driven to suicide. They're broken down. They can't sleep. They 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 get paranoid, and all that stuff happens, and eventuates in a suicide. Is that the uh, is that there is that an experiment for them to see if they can get someone to commit suicide? I don't think it's necessarily their goal, and the reason I think that is if most okay. of these victims have been victimized for a decade or more, um, you know that's why when people say, well. You know, what are they getting at? What are their goals of the victimization? And that's why we think it's experimentation. If you wanted to ruin somebody's life financially and psychologically and politically, you can do that in a couple of weeks with this technology. You don't have to continue victimizing someone for a decade. 
And I, I don't think their ultimate goal is to force the person into suicide. I think that's an unfortunate side effect of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I think the if from a medical point of view, there's only two reasons to study someone for a decade, and that's a behavioral study to see you know how how far you can make someone go under your control and a cancer study and that's if if the ultimate goal is to use this globally to control the mass of the population you'll want to know what type of weird cancers its exposure is going to cause over a long period of time so the, the okay so for men there's a there's a prostate cancer epidemic a prostate uh, problem epidemic all across the world to the point where they're advertising tons of these prostate products where they never used to back 10 12 15 years ago there was not much if any of that kind of medication or you know herbs or whatever it is they're selling that was not really promoted in commercials now uh, talk radio they just openly talk about it like it's like it like it's everybody what what in the world happened there plus breast cancer for women well and you know electromagnetic energy they're finding out does have some long term side effects even what you're bombarded with naturally you know there's there's virtually no place to escape electromagnetic pollution anymore um, that we found out that, that long-term exposure to non-ionizing radiation certainly, you know, can cause um, blood changes, lymphoma type changes, mm-hmm. various types of cancers. If a lot of these people are being chipped, um, the chips themselves, you know, even Verichip is one of the major makers of, of uh, storage chips, mm-hmm. implant, and in their own mice studies, um, these chips had a 10% incidence of causing cancer in mice. And an interesting, uh, just wanted to bring it up in case you haven't heard about it, there's an inventor in Georgia named Bob Boyce, B-O-Y-C-E, uh, invented a way to harness free energy to charge batteries. And he had a, uh, a government official was interested in his patent, took him out to dinner, apparently drugged him. Uh, he woke up some days later. Um, oh, you know, a month or so later, was working in his lab, which involves an anechoic chamber. It's a frequency-free environment to do electronic work. When he noticed an extraneous um, frequency in the room, well, he traced it back to his shoulder where there was a growth on his shoulder. The surgeons removed the growth. It turned out to be melanoma, and buried within the melanoma was a verichip. Um, there was a second verichip found in him as well. These have been removed, have been identified uh, in Georgia. Uh, and if you Google Bob Boyce, you'll see that uh, this has actually made some, some media waves. That's amazing. And it gave, gave it melanoma then. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, okay, so the radiation is uh, well, the body can't really handle it. That makes sense. You know, and, and uh, electromagnetic, the electromagnetic waves uh, have been – a lot of people have uh, proven that to be uh, – you know, cancer producing if you have too many of them. That's why a lot of people have gotten rid of, including me, have gotten rid of their microwave ovens because um, the electromagnetics go into all the food, and if you're standing there, go into you. Well, and if you look at the most of the studies on non-ionizing radiation and microwave pollution have come out of Norway and Switzerland mm-hmm. uh, and are, are based on cell phone uh, radiation studies. And anybody who thinks that your cell phone doesn't cause electromagnetic pollution Put it 10 feet away from a radio or a TV and call it. Um, I mean, you'll see that uh, it disturbs everything with usually in a 5 to 10 foot radius around it. So there certainly is a lot of electromagnetic pollution that comes out of cell phones. And most of these studies have found that there is a higher incidence of certain types of brain tumors and ear canal tumors uh, and lowering of sperm counts of, in, in men that hold their phone in the pocket near the groin. Mm-hmm. However, then when you look at the counter studies that usually come out that are funded by the cell phone companies in this country, they say, oh, no, no, there's, these, are, these are rare instances, and it's not a common finding. Um, so, I mean, who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe an independent study out of Europe, or are you going to believe a cell phone company-sponsored study out of the U.S.? Exactly. And the thing is with uh, the lap, like with laptop, I have a laptop, which uh, when I have the uh, shortwave radio, I have an AM, FM shortwave radio. When it's near the laptop, it can't come in. It's, it's blocked. When I, yeah. take, when I move it, a, you know, a few feet away from the laptop, it comes in fine. So, you know, that I have noticed. And so even though it's not EMF energy that's coming off, because uh, I've measured it, it's, there's, there's a little bit around the keyboard. The laptop itself is putting out uh, the same kind of energy that the cell phone is. So... I wouldn't put it on your lap, folks, you know, <laughs> have, have a laptop and, and maybe, you know, put it on the desk or carry it around. I, I keep it to the side of me, you know, I, I mean, it's kind of become a necessary thing having it, 
but uh, it it does have radiation. So you're not going to want to uh, put it on your body. They say laptop. Actually, they call it a notebook now. Um, and an iPad. Okay, an iPad's got radiation. You know, and we're, what we'll see probably in this younger generation, the, the kids that are in their teens right now, I mean, they spend, you know, 23 out of 24 hours a day with a cell phone to their head anymore. Oh, yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see as that, that, that subgroup of the population gets older, um, you know, what type of tumors or what type of cancers they turn up with. Because, you know, most of us, you know, the, your age and my age, mm-hmm. you know, we'll use our cell phone, you know, when we need to use it, and then it goes back in your bag or, you know, on, on the dash of the car or wherever. But the kids today, I mean, they're, you know, if, if they're not in class and studying, they're on a cell phone. Yeah, they're texting, they're, they're um, you know, it becomes a little computer, they're browsing, they're texting, uh, they're, they're talking, it's, it's, it's a complete communication center. They're listening to tunes, um, you know, so you have the thing in your pocket, like you say, by the groin list in your pocket, listening to tunes. Well, the only problem there is the cancer aspects, but kids are not going to notice it. It's going to hit you later in life. Exactly. And and so, you know, w- w- at a certain age, we become susceptible to cancers. And unfortunately, things that you did earlier in life may have toxic effects later that you, you – maybe you quit using the cell phone, but it may have an accumulation from childhood. I, I know that's been with a lot of people that they've done damage to themselves they weren't aware of, but it came out later in life in the form of a cancer. And okay. So let me – I only have a few more minutes here. Is there anything from the uh, room there? Any questions? They're they're really tuning in. Yes, you're talking. We have a little chat room of TIs. <laughs> Not everyone is a TI there, but uh, I've just um, in the last few minutes, I just want to talk about the kind of you know okay the two things. Number one, uh, Dr. John Hall, it, folks. Dr. John Hall is my guest. His book, A New Breed, is uh, has uh, caused quite a deal, a good deal of controversy, and he's been, you know, also out there vocal. His own radio show, been on, you know, coast to coast, all the big radio shows, uh, TV interviews. So he's out there for the cause. Uh, can they contact you if they want to ask you a question? Or... Sure. The uh, website is www.satweapons.com. Sat, well, that's that pretty straightforward. Satweapons.com. <laughs> Just go to satweapons.com and uh, tell him, you know, the problem. Speaking about it, when people become more public, does that back them off? Uh, to some, well, I know it, it worked in, in the case here in San Antonio. But once once we had some verified evidence, as you know from the book, I, I was able to get audio recordings of them breaking into my fiancé's condo to rape her. Right, right. Um, with them, her screaming at him. And that certainly did back off the stalking. Uh, aspect of it, but uh, you know the electronic harassment. There's no way to prove or disprove it, and there's certainly no way to prosecute it. Uh, at least not yet. Um, we are go- we are coming further along on that. You know, I've met uh, met with Jim Guest, the state rep from Missouri. I presented him a lot of papers and evidence and research that's been done on this technology, and it resulted in him at least passing legislation there against electronic harassment, specifically against um, chipping. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of other states have also passed similar legislation now. So um, there are people listening. I've met with several senators who are actually willing to write legislation against non-consensual experimentation, which is the big thing we're going for now. There's nothing There's nothing making it illegal for the government to experiment on the public in this country currently. Okay. that's a Now, there's a huge problem right there that everyone can relate to. Yeah. And, and they have in the past. I mean, I mean look, look, between the chemtrails, the poisoning of the environment, uh, electronic harassment, and it going more mainstream, meaning, you know, beaming more people with that same technology – it's it's so evil it's beyond even it's 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 almost beyond the ability to 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 think about without feeling like you're crazy you know i mean it's a huge huge topic how have you stayed sane the last few years well you know i'm just I, luckily i'm i i still have a practice and i so i spend half of my time i spend actually focused on being a doctor uh and the other half i spend on on basically helping people and, and i'll be honest with you Zeph. A lot of this has become my ministry of sorts. Um, there are so many people that are confused by this that uh, they think it's God talking to them or angels communicate to them. They think they've been anointed. Uh, and it's, you know, I spend a lot of my time helping people at least to understand it, because if you understand it, you can deal with it. 
Um, it's it's when you don't understand what's going on with you, and you you know you're being attacked. You know it's something coming from the outside, and you know your thoughts are being heard. Um, it's real detrimental to people until they can see that there's a larger group of people that are that are being exposed to it, and that there are people working against it. Okay, yeah, this idea that you okay for people who are very spiritual, and they get to hearing a voice and think, okay, this is an angelic visitation I'm getting. And, um, you, you know, or having thoughts popping in their head and then they say, because it's not their thought, the Lord just spoke to me and he told me to go here or move there or move to somewhere in Canada or move to, you know what I mean, or move to Costa Rica or go somewhere. And it isn't their thought. It's someone else's thought being put there so that you're being lured into a trap. Exactly. And, and people that are fairly devout, but maybe not as educated in prophecy as maybe they should be, mm-hmm. it's real easy to pull that on someone. Um, if you start hearing someone who claims they're God talking to you, I had two girls here in San Antonio that their spirit guides were talking to them through their computer speakers. And, and at first, you know, their spirit guides knew what they were thinking. This obviously must be angels. Uh, until their spirit guide started asking them to perform lesbian sex acts on each other. Then they finally, then they called me and wanted to know what it was. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, so, it's not funny. But, you, know, I, but. you know, so it, it is a common theme. A lot of times if these people know that these are very devout people, they will try the voice to God um, scenario on okay. the voice of God, that I'm hearing God. And, and I have to tell these people, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty devout Christian, and, you know, the Bible is very specific on, on what prophecy to listen to and what prophecy to ignore. And uh, as far as hearing the voice of God, you know, there's been, you know, four people that have heard audibly the, the, the voice of God. And, you know, Moses, Abraham, Jesus, and Isaac. And you know, most people don't fall into that category. Right. And usually, you know, when I hear from God, a lot of times it's a leading of, you know, it's not like a voice that says, I am, you know, let me, let me do this. I am I, 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 the great I, I, Yahweh. 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 <laughs> you know, like, like the great Oz or something, you know, it, it's, it's not, more of an intuition. Yeah. It's like a, like a leading, like, Oh, I think I'll try this or I think it not of thought that, Oh, there was some thought planted in my head. It's just kind of a gentle desire kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, who's to say, I mean, you can look back on one's life and say, okay, my entire life was led by God because God's the author of all of our lives. So, I mean, in the end, it's all going to be God's will anyway. Um, but yeah, that deception of thinking that you're hearing from God and then, and then actually taking action and it's, and it's not, it might as well be the devil. Well, these people are all inspired by Satan, aren't they? Oh yeah. It's it, like you said, it's spiritual warfare and that's, that's a definite and, you know, as far as I'm, I would hate to completely say no one hears God audibly. I mean, I'm sure if God wanted someone to hear him audibly, he could do it. But if you're hearing God in an audible voice and he's telling you to kill somebody, you know, or, you know, to rape someone or to harm yourself, then that's not God's voice. Amen, brother. <laughs> I think on that, we're just, you know, it was great to um, get you back on the show, uh, uh, Dr. John. I like to call you Dr. John. They just you know Dr. John and the Night Tripper. <laughs> that's that's my age. I don't know. I must be ninety years old by now. But uh, it's great to get you back on this show. And it's really this topic. I want to do more shows with you, and I want to get more people involved that need help and kind of you know try to because I'm doing you know doing kind of the same sort of thing you're doing. Maybe I'm a little more spiritual about it. Um, but I am sort of measuring the oppression because I believe we're being mass, massly beamed, lots of us, uh, right now with an anger ray from somewhere, you know, that, uh, and, I, and I don't think that's healthy. And I realize that anger, a lot of it that they're talking about now is not from us. Yeah. It, it's just. I, I agree. It, it, it's a mood, like they have a mood thing that's going. And uh, they, I think that, you know, they're trying to whip it up. They've been trying to do that with the Tea Party to get them to be violent. And that didn't work. So. It's a war. Uh, okay, well, our show is wrapped. Please stay right there, uh, Dr. John Hall and folks. Uh, I, wow, it's just the, the hour went so quickly, and I hope he stays there so we'll be able to talk to him briefly at, at the end here. And um, I'm just trying to think of what we will uh, go out with. Uh, maybe I'll do a little of this. And, um, well, look, any of you have any questions on this, go ahead and, uh, 
you know, email me, but get on the website and his website, all the information is right there. And, um, uh, Dr. John Hall, thank you so much for being here and we'll see you folks next time. Z live. Z live. Z live.